Kind of short, your overall assessment of practice this week and just the adjustments from week one and into week two. You guys have been really intentional about correcting things from the first week's film. Uh, it's the best thing about having game film is you know what you did well, you know what you didn't do well, you know if you had some tendencies, you know uh, what they are, whether it's stances, splits, formations, uh, alignments on defense, and, and so you can work on how to fix those things. And so it's just a lot of information, and the guys have been really intentional and focused about getting better. And that was the goal. You know, we have to be fundamentally a better football team than we were last year to play better. And so I'm uh, excited about what I've seen on the field so far. And obviously, we've got 48 hours of really good mental stuff coming up with the guys to kind of polish up the mental piece of the game plan. How have we seen that to get off to a fast start against NC, keep him from gaining momentum and confidence? Yeah, it helps. Uh, there's no doubt. You know, an offense like theirs that can score a lot of points, you know. The, the complementary football of up-tempo opponents is important, you know, so uh, the conversion downs on both sides, you know, and creating attainable conversion downs too. So when you talk about the importance of third down, and, and it is important, but creating third and shorts on offense, third and longs on defense, and then winning those because the odds are stacked, you know, in your favor when you're on defense with a third and long versus a third and short and, and vice versa. And so, you know, it's, the offense setting up the defense with long drives and ends with kicks, the defense getting off the field, creating good third downs, and special teams creating field position like that. So to win a game against an opponent that can score like Tennessee, you have to play really good complementary football. And if you can do it from the jump, it really helps, you know? But as you know, it's gonna take every minute, every second of this football game. How important is it of an opportunity now that brand exposure and NIL is so relevant that you guys get another chance to play in Charlotte, another part of North Carolina, get more fans, get more brand exposure, especially in such a big game. Yeah, you know, being in Charlotte's great. You know, we have 20 players on our roster from there. It's always been a critical area in the state for all the teams that recruit here, and uh, in particular for us. And so playing there's, you know, a couple things. You, you get to be in a pro stadium, which, you know, all these guys grow up wanting to be NFL players. So they get that exposure of a pro stadium. You get to be in a different city in your own state that really matters in recruiting. Um, and then you get to play a, you know, a really good opponent from a great conference that touches our state, you know, and so there's great rivalry there between the fan bases and all that. It's going to be a lot of fun. You talked about learning from game one and applying that in the practice field. Have you seen that kind of in the run game, you know, this week? Yeah, fundamentals. You know, guys maybe were uh, – stepping underneath themselves on a play and not gaining six inches on their first step. And so that's been talked about with that player. You know, another guy's hand was too far here and you want it more on this side. And, and so the details of blocking, not just the front, but what happens when the front moves, what happens when this ad, uh, linebacker adds in, the end doesn't squeeze, he goes upfield and they replace him with a linebacker. And, and so the more reps you get in football, the more muscle memory you get. And so it's, it's really good to have game film because, you know, going against a scout team is great. But when you understand how important it is to do it right, do it right, do it right, and then it applies in the game or do it wrong, do it wrong in practice, what happens on game day is you do it wrong. You know, we build habits in football every day, winning habits and losing habits. And so that's where game film is so critical. And for some of these guys, you know, 20 plus guys in their first game, it's their first opportunity to be coached by this staff after a football game. And so there's a lot of things there that are new for them. And I'm glad we're now getting into that routine so they understand how we do our work. This was your first time to see Grayson kind of process what he did well and didn't do well in an actual game and then translate it to the practice field. Just how do you think he did in practice this week? Yeah, you know, he's hard on himself. He's super competitive. At the same time, he goes to the next play. And that's pretty, uh, that's rare. It is, because some guys are just flat line the whole time, up in phases. Um, he gets excited, you know. I mean, he is a guy that he has charisma, and he, he shows, you know, when he makes a play, when a guy makes a play for him, when there's physicality, he celebrates that with those guys. And, and when he makes a mistake, he gets mad at himself, you know. But he gets to the next play really fast. And so I really respect that about him. How difficult can it be when, when your defense has a difficult first half against a team like Western Carolina? And you go up to a team that's, no disrespect to Western Carolina, but even better sure. with Tennessee. Is it difficult for the defense to 
kind of rise to the occasion even more after a difficult first half in their first game? No, I think it's good. You know, I think being tested is a good thing. You know, um, showing that you can come back from adversity is a good thing. And um, Western Carolina is the number one offense in FCS in seven categories a year ago. So I wouldn't discredit what they did last year on offense. And I agree with you, Tennessee is a really good offense too. And uh, it's going to be the receiving core. Um, and the number of receivers that roll into the game and the backs that they have and the number of backs, they, they got a lot of good players. Their depth is different, you know, than the team we played last week. And obviously their quarterback is, he played really good, you know, last week. So defense has a great opportunity to go up against a really good offense. And we think our defense is pretty good too, you know, so I look forward to the matchup. Do you feel like they've made the necessary improvements this week and have put in the work needed to? We'll find out Saturday, right? Of course we do. And that's why we practice, why we scheme, that's why these kids work. Uh, we're out there practicing. I thought we had a really good day yesterday. I haven't seen the film yet. Um, guys made a bunch of interceptions running around. We had a bunch of high speeds on the field. Their, their energy was exceptional. So like what we're seeing on the practice field. Tennessee yeah. averages about 200 yards on the ground yeah. each, under each of our Heupel's years so far. Um, what about what they do running the ball wise stands out so much? It, it feels like a normal like, fan may kind of look at its offense like Tennessee and forget about their ability to run, yeah. but that's so important. Yeah, I mean, they're ninth in the country in rushing last year. Um, what makes them different, you know, the spacing of their offense, so there's more people removed, and, and so you have less guys that can get into the box to stop the run. Uh, they don't have a lot of schemes, you know, their guys are really good at blocking the things they do, uh, so they get good at seeing every look you know, up front, and their quarterback can run, you know, and so that adds another element. You know, some of the rushing yards aren't run plays, they're drop by passes that he makes run his rushing yards out of. So, yeah, it's a really good offense. I, you know, I have a lot of respect for what he does and how he does it. And, uh, you know, for us, we got to be really good on first and second down, man. I mean, when those offenses, first down, first down, for the tempo just goes. And, and so you got to get them off schedule, and it's easy to say. You know, that's really what you have to do in these games, and you've seen us do it in the past, and in those games we've had success. You had mentioned on Monday that Grayson was so close to 400 plus yards, and he really was. He was, he, yeah. You know, Justin with the penalty and, and Jacarius, and then Keenan Jackson, the timing just being a little bit yeah. off. How encouraging is it that you saw those kind of potential big plays that could happen all over the field? Yeah, I think we had 19 explosive plays in the game. Um, and it would have been above 20, which I don't think we ever had that. You know, so he was behind KC on an over route. He missed Keenan on a post, and we had a touchdown called back that was an explosive, you know. So it's great to see. And that's what I was hoping we would see, you know, because we've added skill to the offense uh, in every position. So there's guys that can do things after the catch. It's one thing to, you know, run the football or throw a completion. It's another when the guy turns those plays into explosives because he doesn't get tackled by the first player. And that's something we've put a lot of effort into. Speaking of the defense earlier, uh, you get Caden Ford back yeah. this week. What does he bring that maybe could have been missing from last week's game? Yeah, you know, I think just his experience. Um, I thought Jalen Parker stepped in and played really well, but Caden's played more football. Uh, he has more knowledge. He's got more game experiences to lean back on, and uh, you're going to be more confident when you've played more football. You can talk to the guys around you more because you understand what's happening. And so you gain a leader on the field that you know has a status and his room is that, uh, and with the defensive front with that. So, yeah, losing your, your mic is similar to losing your quarterback in a game. Like, that's a big loss when that guy goes out on play five, you know. So we're excited to have him back in the lineup. Y'all so struggled on fourth and one last yeah. week. Has, has there been more of an emphasis on that in practice this week or just kind of the same amount? No, there's been a huge emphasis on it. Uh, that rips my heart out when we don't get it on fourth and one. Like to me, that's a down and distance that is a a personal down and distance. Like you know, as a guy that blocked for a living as a college player, like you call fourth and one as a head coach, as a player, you like hell yeah, coach, let's go. You know, and you owe it to the, the coaches that put the trust in you to get that down and distance. And, and it wasn't that we weren't trying; we weren't playing with good enough technique. And you can see it on the film, guys are fall stepping. We're not getting off the ball with proper leverage. And, and so we put a ton of emphasis on short yardage in this game, not just for Tennessee, but for the season. You know, that's a down and distance midfield that you need to go for it. I mean, every chart in the world is going to tell you to do that. When you get to the 40-yard line, it's, that's what you do. 
Do we get to fourth and one? We need to be successful. You mentioned Tennessee touches the water. Have you talked about the regional and the SEC aspect of this game with your kids? No. I mean, they know that they're in the SEC. You know, they're going to have to spend time on that. Talk more about how we have to play to win the football game. It's not about them. Like everyone makes it about who you're playing. We're going to know these guys just like they're going to know us. But for us to win the game, we have to do what we do. We have to execute. We have to play at a high level. I and mean, then we have to play 11 man football. And so a lot more emphasis on us uh, when it comes to executing and winning. I think a lot of games are lost. You know, and all that talk about who you're playing, it's more about our guys doing things the way they're coached to do it at a high level in sync. 11 guys, every play, stacking 11 man football, every play. And so that's the emphasis in this game. Do you think that's what changed in the fourth quarter against? Western Carolina? Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, we just started playing together. Started playing together, getting off the field on third down on defense, staying on the field, scoring touchdowns, breaking tackles, finishing drives. Yeah, I mean, we just stopped shooting ourselves in the foot with the things, and it wasn't penalties. Like, we played pretty clean that way, with the exception of the lineman downfield. There's no free snap penalties on either side of the football, you know, so we caught the football well, you know, and so it's more about just getting all those guys to do it together. Um, Caden, I'm sure, doesn't need any extra motivation, but how, how has he kind of handled how being, you know, moved out of the game in those first five plays? That's hard on him. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he worked really hard this offseason to be a leader and improve himself, his stamina, his knowledge of the defense. These guys care a lot about winning. And so when you take yourself out of the game, I mean, that's hard. And, you know, you hit a quarterback anywhere in the head, there's a yellow flag coming out. I and mean, that's how it's called now. And we know the rules. We've got to be able to play by him. And, the sliding play of the quarterback is a challenging play in football. It really is. And as a player, you got to do everything you can to avoid when you see that guy going down. You talk, you ask a question, guys. You talk about Tennessee's wide receivers being a big, you know, challenge. You know, how big is it to get Jihad back and kind of playing that? that yeah, game? it helps. I mean, Jihad was an All-American two years ago. He's a really good defensive back. He's played a lot of football. He's covered a lot of good receivers in his time. He's an experienced guy. He's hungry. He didn't play last year a lot, and he's hungry to get on that field. We're excited that he's healthy and look forward to seeing him in the lineup. Thank you.